A powerful speech that evokes the pioneering spirit of humanity, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, began by recalling monumental moments in history. From the launch of Sputnik to the moon landing, humanity has always defied what seemed impossible, reaching unprecedented heights through ingenuity and determination. However, despite our collective ability to conquer the stars, we now face an unequally daunting challenge closer to home, the growing threat of social media and its destructive impact on our children's mental well-being. Harry's speech drew attention to the dangerous landscape created by the digital age. While social media platforms offer convenience, creativity, and global connection, they have also introduced an insidious undercurrent, the rise of cyberbullying, addiction, misinformation, and the erosion of mental health among young people. For many children, the digital world has become a battlefield, a place where anxiety, depression, and feelings of isolation have become alarmingly common. Harry, speaking with conviction and personal experience, made it clear. The harmful effects of social media are made by design, he said. He highlighted that today's youth are navigating an environment where they are constantly targeted by addictive content, endless scrolling, and a barrage of information, some of which no child should ever be exposed to. His words echoed the fears of many parents who have lost children to cyberbullying and digital abuse, a tragedy that motivated him to launch the Parents Network, a global initiative aimed at supporting those affected. Supporting Harry's plea, research on the impact of social media shows stark statistics. According to a 2019 study published in JAMA Pediatrics, there is a clear link between excessive social media use and increased rates of anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts. Amount, amount teenagers. The constant exposure to unrealistic standards and online bullying leads many young people to feel isolated and overwhelmed. Harry's description of the modern human experiment rings painfully true. We were promised human connection, but have instead been thrust into an experiment that is on regulated and harmful. Cyberbullying in particular has emerged as a devastating consequence of the experiment. A 2020 report from UNICEF reveals that more than one third of young people in 30 countries reported being victims of cyberbullying, with some experiencing lifelong mental health impacts. The anonymity, anonymity of the internet allows for relentless bullying, often leaving victims without a safe space to escape. Prince Harry's speech, however, was not just a lament. It was a call to action. He urged parents, educators, policymakers, 
and even social media companies themselves to take responsibility for the world we create. Just as humanity once conquered the moon, we can, he believes, create a digital landscape that fosters well-being, empathy, and respect. But we must act now. We cannot wait for corporations to regulate themselves. We need immediate coordinate, co coordinated efforts to protect our children from the darker side of the digital realm. Harry reminded the audience that young people possesses extraordinary creativity and resilience. They are already speaking up and advocating for change. It is our duty to empower them with digital lit, lit, lit with digital literacy, critical thinking and emotional intelligence skills that will help them navigate this ch the, the, ch the challenges of the online world. Prince Harry's message is clear. Just as we once reached for the stars, we must now protect the very future we hold in our hands. The time to act is now and the safety of our children depends on our willingness to face this digital crisis head on. I must say, I, I, I watched him and listened to that speech and I just thought, what an incredible, incredible speech. And the emphasis in what is important and action to follow up was just absolutely extraordinary. And at the same time, I kept thinking, okay, social media companies, he's calling them out and on a big stage. Oh boy, you know? But I am, I, I'm, I'm almost tri driven to tears. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Good morning, everybody. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, in 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the world's first satellite, marking humanity's first stride into the vast expanse of space. And then in 1961, we witnessed a monumental achievement as Yuri Gagarin became the first human to journey into space, a feat that captured the imagination of people around the globe. And of course, we cannot forget 1969, when American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history with the first successful human landing on the moon, a triumph that showcased the potential of human invention and spirit. Over the course of our history, humankind has dared to exceed the limitations of possibility. We've dreamed the inconceivable, we've built the unimaginable, and as a result, we live in a time where accessibility to everything, everywhere, all at once, rests in the palm of our hands. Yet, while we celebrate global achievements and their impact, there is still critical work to do. And so, I stand before you today to speak about the pervasive threat that our online world poses to us, especially our children, if we allow the status quo to remain. In an age where our lives are intertwined with technology, we cannot afford to only see the online world as a space for profitability. 
competition, and rapid growth. Instead, we must come together to ensure the digital space is one that fosters well-being, connection, and hope. Young people today are disproportionately affected by negative experiences online and mental health issues stemming from their digital interactions. They know it. The statistics prove it. They're navigating an environment that is often hostile and overwhelming. Reports of anxiety, depression, and social isolation linked to these platforms have surged in recent years, creating a crisis that cannot be ignored. These challenges are compounded by the relentless spread of unreliable and unfounded information, leaving many feeling isolated, confused, and scared. These are not distant problems. They're epidemics currently testing our resolve, and they cannot be ignored. My lock screen is a picture of my... What's yours? These children, and thousands more, meant the world to their families. The beautiful faces you see before you, their smiles, their dreams, all lost. All too soon, and all because of social media. It's why we launched the Parents Network, a global community that provides support to parents whose children have suffered from the harmful effects of social media. And it is because of them that we at the Archwell Foundation are committed to this issue. Through trauma-informed practices, our network helps parents come together to forge strong bonds, offering healing support through community. This safe and free to access peer support not only, not only offers invaluable resources and advice, it is guided by a licensed facilitator, ensuring that no one has to navigate this journey alone. Our platform provides opportunity for parents to turn their pain into purpose, ultimately changing the very system that stole their child. As the digital landscape has evolved, we've seen rising polarization, social unrest, and a disconnect that often manifests itself in violence and fear. Personal social connections have fallen secondary to alternative digital realities. These platforms are designed to create addiction. Young people are kept there by mindless, endless, numbing scrolling, being force-fed content that no child should ever be exposed to. This, it's not free will. I, like many of you, did not grow up with a phone. Young people today possess an incredible understanding of technology that older generations may struggle to grasp. They are digital natives, adept at navigating online spaces and spotting harmful trends. Their artistry and fresh perspectives allow them to envision solutions that we might overlook. They are also part of a collective who use their voice to speak up when something is wrong. Deep commitments to social justice and inclusivity drive them to advocate for a future that we can be proud of. So we must empower them. We must listen to their experiences, understand their perspectives, and provide them with the resources that they need to navigate and shape the digital world. Something we, that we keep at the core of our work. We must raise them to know that IQ without EQ will always fall short. We must provide them with spaces to innovate and advocate for solutions that prioritize safety, respect, and empathy. And while we embolden both youth and parents to be in the conversation, we must also hold those in power accountable. The first ever global ministerial meeting focused on ending violence to children will take place in Colombia this November. And it is where, for the first time, there can be global agreement on prioritizing child safety and protection online. 
<laughs> Our laws and regulations are different state to state, country to country. We may have different backgrounds, viewpoints, beliefs, and even access to the internet itself. But the one thing that we can universally agree on is the safety of our children. So why, why do the leaders of these insanely powerful social media companies still refuse to change? Why are we holding them to the lowest ethical standards? In any other circumstance, a business would commit all resources to fixing the bug. Instead of providing parents with more tips and tricks for navigating hostile environments, shareholders need to demand change. Some say kids will be kids, and well, that may well be true. Kids may get into trouble. I know a thing or two about that. <laughs> But our kids, our kids are being targeted. The harmful effects of social media are made by design. While we embolden both youth and parents, we must also hold digital accountable. Surely, surely, none of us want to live in a world where there is no consequence or accountability. Parenting doesn't end at birth of a child, neither does founding a company. Whether parent or CEO, we have a duty and a responsibility to see our creations through. If corporations unabashedly lack responsibility, it doesn't mean we should do the same. Their platforms may be under our fingertips, but we have the fate of the future, their future, in our hands. When many in our world today seem to conflate opinion as fact and fact as opinion, we have to work hard to seek and reveal truth. For as, for as long as we're debating over lies, we will forever be divided. And when so much of our future is uncertain, we need to meet global insecurity with compassion rather than hate. Inclusivity and equity are not optional. They are the bedrock upon which we must build our, community, our communication and community. And fear, orchestrated at the highest levels, needs to be seen for what it is, a tactic to mask indifference and a failure to seek real solutions. As a growing movement, the Parents Network is committed to this journey. We need platforms that mirror our highest values, designed with safety in mind. But in the meantime, we can't wait. Our kids can't wait. We need to create and teach digital literacy, emotional intelligence, and critical thinking. We need to equip our youth with the skills they need to identify and combat online threats. We need a better digital future, one that we all deserve. We were promised a human experience. Instead, we've been a human experiment. This is an invitation to each and every one of you to open your eyes, ears, and hearts to these realities and to channel our power, resources, and intelligence toward meaningful action. All we have today in this moment stems from the defiance of boundaries we once thought existed. We've split the atom. We've walked on the moon. We are equipped to tackle this. The future of our world and our youth depend on it. We all just need to want it enough. And I know that I do. Thank you. Thank you.